I went through that ego death and it, it literally felt like peeling an onion. I felt layers peeled off of me. And every time the songs changed, that's when I felt I was coming back to my body. This is the first time I noticed I had left my body spiritually because I started coming back and it almost felt like my body was a spaceship, like a, like a vessel. And I could see, you know, I, I, I was, I was kind of like present. I would open, open my eyes and I, and it felt like I was there, but not there at the same time. And my body almost felt hollow and I could see through my blanket, the lights outside. And at one point I even checked, I was like, wait, hold up. Am I still in the same spot? Did I like move? I don't know. Cause I really didn't, I felt like I had left. What's going on guys, I'm Bobby Lynch and this is my ayahuasca experience. Before we get into all of what I went through in the ceremony, I'm going to bring it back to why and where it all started. So in 2022, on May 7th, I went through the most traumatic experience I've ever gone through. I was in a major car crash and I was in the back seat of the car with my best friend DJ Moore and his girlfriend Soul and we crashed headfirst into an exit ramp divider going about 90 miles per hour and they were thrown from the car and killed on impact. I lived because I had my seatbelt on and they didn't because they didn't. And last year was honestly the hardest year of my life. I went through so much pain so many times where I felt like I didn't want to live anymore. And I had already lost my dad seven years ago to cancer, but this was not even comparable because when my dad passed, we knew his death was imminent. Unfortunately, he had been diagnosed five years prior and at the time of his death, he was suffering a lot. So when he died, it was almost a relief. And I went through a lot of pain and suffering from that. And a lot of things that I had to process and cope with took me a long time to put together to really understand. And still, some of that trauma had been left over up until the ceremony. But once I went through the experience with losing DJ and Soul so suddenly, it really just turned my world upside down and I was having a hard time wanting to continue forward. On the surface, people who didn't know me would have seen me and thought everything was great. And even those who do know me and knew everything that I went through, they still really didn't know the suffering that I was going through inside. And that's why before even getting into things, one thing I want to say is always strive to be mindful and empathetic of others because you never know what somebody is going through, even though everything on the outside may seem all fine and dandy, people could really be suffering on the inside for many things, whether it be something traumatic like this, the loss of friends, or maybe something happened in their life another traumatic incident, it didn't cause any death, but it still has affected them deeply. And that could be many different things. So first and foremost, I wanna say, just lead with empathy because you really never know what's going on with somebody on the inside. But continuing on, the reason I went to an ayahuasca ceremony and I sat with the medicine is because I really felt a calling. Although ayahuasca is something after experiencing it is now something I highly recommend that everybody experience at least one time in their life, you have to be ready for the medicine. And you'll know when you're ready because she will call you. She, as in Mother Aya, the shamans who give the medicine and who orchestrate the ceremony and lead it, they refer to ayahuasca, the medicine, as Mother Aya because she takes care of you. You really can hear her speaking to you like a mother. And she connects you with Gaia, Mother Earth, from which all of us were born here in this physical world. But Mother Aya, she also connects you to your higher self, your third eye. And you will ultimately realize just how 
omnipresent of a spiritual being you are once you sit with the medicine if you haven't already realized this and omnipresent means god and now a lot of people might think well we aren't god but what i mean by that is we all are our own gods we have the power to control our life however we want and this is something that i realized in the experience that everything in life is a choice and whatever is going on in our lives whether it be prosperity or whether it be suffering is our choice and once we own up to that and we accept it that's when we ultimately have our freedom and i realized that i was choosing to suffer from the accident although yes it was very traumatic when i really sit and think about it would dj and soul even though they passed would they want me to suffer now that they're not here anymore no they wouldn't they they would want me to continue on living my life to the fullest and doing everything that i am meant to do why i am still here and that's something that i was having a hard time coping with why did they go and i survived it just didn't make sense to me so that really affected my relationship with my partner Aggie. I was very closed off emotionally. I knew deep down that I ultimately wanted a, a deep relationship with someone. I had been single for five years leading up to meeting her. We met on April 1st. And I was having a hard time opening up. There was some other things that from my past relationships that made me closed off. I had a two and a half year relationship that I thought she was the love of my life. I really thought we were gonna spend the rest of our lives together and ultimately she did a 180 on me. She cheated on me and uh, pretty much blocked me. And that was it. I, and I have not honestly talked to her to this day about anything that went down with us. So that affected me. And after that, I closed myself off to wanting a relationship for five years until my current relationship now. And then I had another situation, if you will, with a girl for six months in New York City. And her and I are still friends now. But at the time, she had just come out of a long term relationship. And where she was at, she wasn't in the best place. Uh, and wasn't ready for a commitment. I was more ready and trying to open myself to a commitment, but because she was closed off and just how everything went down with her, it ultimately closed me off even more after that uh, to a relationship. And again, I was trying to open myself up, but I had just built up all these walls. I had built up a big ego to protect myself from both girls <laughs> and getting hurt again and I started seeking a lot of casual sex not really wanting to invest emotionally I would be surface level and you know get a little deep but I would never really go much deeper than the surface I I I didn't want to fully open myself up and give myself to somebody and I started noticing patterns where I was attracting these toxic girls into my life ones that were also closed off just like me and any girl that was open and ready and willing for a relationship and i i was so closed off to that versus it was the complete opposite before before i had that two year two and a half year relationship before her i had two you know longer term relationships they're about eight months each but i remember you know in my teenage years and when i started dating up until my breakup in 2017 when I was, let's see, uh, about 23 at the time, I was really open and ready and willing and wanting a committed relationship. But again, like I said, I closed off very much after that. So those are all of like the main traumas that I was holding on inside of me 
there was also some things from my childhood with my parents. Now that I'm older and wiser, things that went down with my parents when I was young, even though my parents were together for 35 years before my dad passed, I recognize how there were also a lot of traumas that they didn't properly heal from. And ultimately as adults, our inner voice, that, that childhood voice is the voice of our parents from when we were children. And if we never properly take the time to go deep and to understand ourselves from within, we're never gonna properly heal from that. We're gonna build up these walls, we're gonna build up this, these, you know, this ego, egos, depending on whatever the situation is, to protect ourselves. And that's pretty much where I was going into this ceremony regarding that. And then once DJ and Soul passed and I went through that accident, it really just shut me down. And it definitely affected my relationship, as I was saying, last year, because it's not that I didn't want to open up. I just was struggling so much with the pain and trauma and around the accident. And in accepting that, I was, I'm never going to, I'm never going to see DJ and Soul in this physical world, in this lifetime again. I'm never going to be able to have experiences with them. I'm never going to be able to just tell them here and now how much I love them and how much I care for them. And that's why I always say, make sure that you really take the time to show a love and appreciation to those that you really care about because you never know what can happen. You never know what can happen. So the reason I tell you all of this is because ayahuasca, she will help you heal from all things like this. All of those traumas, all of those egos and walls you have built up to protect yourself, she will help you break all of those down. Any mental blocks you have. Another mental block I had was financially, not thinking that I am able to receive the abundance that I'm receiving now financially, not thinking that I could do things on my own. I, that came after my dad passed and I was just not as confident in myself because I didn't have that security anymore. I didn't have that father figure to turn to, to, to for advice to guide me. I had to figure it all out on my own and I have been putting myself out there and doing that, but I always was a little hesitant. So leading into the ceremony, I set my intentions on wanting to heal from all of this, especially the accident, because that was the thing that was really, really holding me back. And so now to get into my experience in the ceremony, because I know that's what you guys are here wanting to, to get onto, but again, remember, setting your intentions and knowing exactly why you're going into the ceremony is super important. So that way you know exactly what it is that you are wanting to heal. But again, Mother Aya, she will give you everything that you need, not always everything that you want. But for me, it was a combination of both. So how the ceremony started, everyone was in a room. We all had our little beds set out, blankets, pillows, eye mask, candles going, some music, lights were very dim. The lights were off and it was just that you know just, everything was just candlelit and then everyone in clockwise order started with hape shots hape is ground tobacco and that really sets your mind into your body it grounds you you become very present in the moment and then after that we took our first dose of the ayahuasca and we had the ability to take up to three doses 90 minutes apart if necessary I ended up taking two after the first 90 minutes. I didn't really feel anything because during that 90 minutes, I just laid down, I put my eye mask on. It almost felt like I was taking a nap. I kind of felt like I was dreaming a little bit, but it didn't. I didn't really feel the medicine. I didn't really feel Mother Aya talking to me. And then after we got the call for the, the second dose, I took that and this dose was a lot thicker and this one really, really hit. It was only about 20 minutes in and I started really feeling the medicine doing its work. And at that point, I just wanted to go into my own space. I wanted to be away from everybody. I didn't want anybody else in the room to see my healing, even though nobody was really paying attention. They were all in their own zone. But 
it, this is also something that I had to heal from. This is my own ego here talking to me. But of course, I didn't realize this yet. So the first thing I did was I pulled my blanket over my head and I completely went into a cocoon under the blanket. And I was balled up laying on my side and I closed my eyes and that's when I really started to feel like I was leaving my body. The colors and shapes started to appear. And then I heard Mother Aya talking to me. And during the ceremony, I went through multiple ego deaths, actually where I felt like I died every time. And every time I went through this, it was regarding something different that I needed to heal from, all of what I just described to you guys. And the first thing was my mom. My mom and I, we have a great relationship. We literally talk about everything. She's one of the first people that I turn to and open up to about literally everything that happens in my life, especially relationships. I turn to her for advice. I like to hear her perspective from a woman's perspective. And at the same time, we also butt heads at times because there are a few topics that we have differences of opinions on, which you know, both of us care very deeply about. And we've definitely ego battled. So a lot of times, you know, this is what I recognize in the ceremony is that when we're letting our emotions get the best of us, what's really happening, it's our inner child's battling. Because as children, we're still learning how to understand our emotions and control ourselves and to actually show up and to be mature and to have calm and collected conversations. But as adults, when we don't properly heal from our child wounds, that's our inner child voice that's really battling with somebody else behind these ego walls that we have built up. And so the first thing that I went through was Mother Aya told me that if I want to even better my relationship with my mom, because it has been rocky at times, I need to be fully accepting of my mom for everything that she is, for the process that she's going through herself, and to be more loving, to always lead with love, to tell her how much I love her, to tell her how much I care for her, and that if I want to have a great relationship with her, a really, really great relationship with her in this life, so that the things that we've been going through recently can end, I need to fully love her and show her, not that I don't love her, but really show her how much I love her and accept her for her process. And then I started, you know, I went, I went through that ego death and it, it literally felt like peeling an onion. I felt layers peeled off of me. And every time the songs changed, that's when I felt I was coming back to my body. This is the first time I noticed I had left my body spiritually because I started coming back and it almost felt like my body was a spaceship, like a, like a vessel. And I could see, you know, I, I, I was... I was kind of like present. I would open open my eyes, and I and it felt like I was there, but not there at the same time. And my body almost felt hollow, and I could see through my blanket the lights outside. And at one point, I even checked. I was like, "Wait, hold up. Am I still in the same spot? Did I like move? I don't know." Because I, I really didn't. I felt like I had left, and I, I I peeked out, and I was like, "Okay, I'm actually still in the same spot." And then I covered my covered the blanket again. I was like, "All right, good. I, you know, I'm cool. I'm safe." just had to check in on my body, my spirit, right? And then, and then I went, and then before I went back out of my body, I had to go through that ego death. Mother Aya said, okay, because I was like, I want to continue my healing. And Mother Aya said to me, okay, you can do that, but you have to let go of this part of your ego. And that means, you know, putting up walls and, and, not being as loving and accepting of my mom in different situations that I can be. And I, it literally felt like I died and I went out of my body again. And then the next biggest healing that I went through was with DJ and soul. And this was the hard part for me. This, this is, this is when I, I actually felt like I died. I, flashed 
to the moment when I was on the side of the road with them after I had gotten out of the car, after we had already crashed. That moment, I felt like, in that moment, actually, in, in reality, I actually felt I had an out-of-body out of experience where I saw myself from a third third person perspective getting out of the car and walking down the road because as soon as I opened the door they were there on the road and soul was closest to me and I got to her and she was on her side how I was laying in the ceremony and then that's when my whole body just crippled up I am I, mean, I like I, I couldn't move and then it felt like the weight of the world just started pressing me into the pavement. Again, mind you, I'm in I'm in Soul's perspective now when she passed, but I'm still you know I'm here. And then my whole body just crippled up, and it actually felt like I died. The whole, it felt like the whole weight of the world crushed me, and I went through the pavement. But then everything was bliss, and I felt nothing at all. And I was outside of my body, and I and I talked with DJ and Soul. And this is when a lot of the, this is where I went through a lot of the healing because both of them told me that it's okay, Bobby, like, we love you, we're here for you, but we chose to leave. It was our choice. And I know that's hard to understand, but we wanted to leave Earth. Because remember, we are all omnipresent spiritual beings here who have chosen to be in our bodies in this physical world. We come to earth to learn, to experience, to progress ourselves as spiritual beings, but in this physical world where we can really interact with other people and have experiences that will progress us forward. And that that was that was really freeing for me it was at the same time it was sad but it was really freeing because dj told me he's my angel now and he's always going to help me and guide me through life because i'm here for a reason and my purpose for being here which is something he actually told me uh beforehand was you know he he, he had a moment and he had a psychedelic moment before his passing and he told me that he spoke to God and God told him that he put me here to make me a better man. And I can't speak enough volumes on how true that is, especially after this ceremony and realizing everything. DJ and I, we went through so much together in just the short time that we knew each other. He was my best friend. He was my soul brother. We pushed each other to be better every day in a very non-biased, open way. And we really, we really grew together. And that's what made it so hard for me to accept because I missed him so much. It, like the, the connection that we had as friends, as brothers, it was just, it, it was unlike anything that I've really had before. And I have a couple of other really close friends, like with my actual brother, Ryan, and with Marcus, and I have another friend back home, Kevin. I have really close relationships with them, but you know, what I shared with DJ, it was just like, it, it's, it, it was just, it was something else, you know, and that doesn't knock what I have with those guys because actually what I have with them is, is really close. But, you know, me and DJ, we just experienced so much together, living together in New York City, moving out across the country. It was a lot. And, and that was really hard to process. But this was freeing because he told me that he's here for me and he always will be here for me. And after that, that's when I started coming back to my body because I felt the song starting to change. And this is when I went through my next ego death and a lot of my healing because for a second, I actually felt my body stop breathing when I was coming back in because I started talking to Mother Aya and I said, I don't wanna go yet. I wanna go be with DJ. And she said to me, that's okay, that you can do that. But if you want to go be with him, he's in another dimension right now. And that means you have to make the choice to leave everyone and everything that you have here on this earth to go be with him. You have to die right now. And, that, and you have to accept that you doing that is your choice, just like they made the choice to leave. And that's when I realized that I don't want to leave. 
I love my life so much and I love everyone that's in my life and I want to stay. And I said that to her and she said, okay. And I, can't, and I felt my body come back in and that's, and I said, but I want to continue my healing. And she said, okay, it's time to let go of the next ego that you have built up. And that's regarding my partner, Aggie. And the walls that I had built up towards her for nothing that she did to me. It was regarding I, like the pain that I described and the trauma that I was going through and having a hard time wanting to open up with her emotionally after the accident, but then also because of past relationship traumas. And she said, okay, you can continue your healing, but you have to let go of your ego towards Aggie. You have to show her now how much you love her, how much you care for her, how much you appreciate her. You really have to make it a point to know all of it, that she knows all of this all the time so that she can feel safe and secure in your relationship. And I, at that point, I, I, I opened my eyes to check on her and I looked over and she was in her moment doing her thing because the medicine affects you in different ways you know you might have moments where you're like feeling really happy and you're going to dance you want to get up and dance maybe you're there and you're awake and you're just feeling like this or you'll have other moments where you're you're going to feel like you need to purge and you you need to throw up a lot of people in the room actually were throwing up i had moments where i felt like i wanted to throw up but at the same time that was that meant if i was going to puke I had to come back to my body and I had to decide that. I had to make that decision for myself. And the big recurring theme for me in this whole ceremony was acceptance. Acceptance of everything that we do in life, all of our decisions, whether our decisions lead us to being prosperous or whether our decisions lead us to suffer. All of that is our choice at the end of the day. And so that's why I ultimately decided, and I had these conversations in my head, do I want to puke right now? Do I actually feel the need to purge? And I didn't feel the need. And so I didn't. But when I looked over at Aggie, she was having her moment and she was doing her thing. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna let her do her thing. I'm gonna continue healing. And Mother Aya kept talking to me to guide me through letting go of these walls that I had built up. And then it seemed like it was only a few seconds that passed. It must have been a little bit longer because then I was like, I really want to go talk to Aggie right now. I want to tell her all of this. I want to tell her how much I love her, how much I care for her. And Mother I was saying, okay, if you want, you can go talk to her. It's your choice. You have that, you have that power. You are a spiritual being here in this physical world who can do anything that you want to do in this life. You have the decision. It's your choice. And so I... But of course, I wanted to respect Aggie's process, so I just took the cover off my head and I checked again, and she was sitting up, and she was cross-legged, sitting there, almost like she was waiting for me to come over, but her eyes were closed, and she's kind of still bobbing her head like this, and I was like, okay, now's my time. And I got up, and I went over to her, and I sat down with her, and I held her hands, and I said, hey, I, I wanted to come over to tell you how much I love you, how much I care for you, how much I really appreciate you, everything that you've done for me, how loyal that you've been to me, how committed you've been to our relationship, even through all of what I've been going through. That is exactly why I am here with you today, because of who you are and everything that you've done for me. And that's when she said, oh my God, like, Bob, I love you so much. Like, And she told me about her healing and everything that she was going through. And we had a very powerful moment with each other there, a moment that I'll never forget. But this is where I went through my next ego death because one of the shamans, Natalia, she came over and she said, hey guys, you're getting a little too loud. You just have to be very mindful of everyone else. And to her, I said, okay, no problem. But in my head, I, I kind of, I felt a little triggered by that. But whenever you are triggered, what that means is something inside of you needs to change. Because if you're feeling triggered, most often people run from that feeling or they react poorly, they explode. But what is happening there is you are leading with your inner child. You are leading with your ego. And a lot of times that's when people ego battle and people get into big blow ups and everything just goes crazy. I felt triggered in that moment. 
because I was like, I'm having this moment with Aggie. I just want to continue having that moment. Of course, I was definitely going to be respectful to Natalia. But in my head, I was like, we should just leave. And I literally said that to Aggie. I was like, do you want to just get up and go? But one of the rules of the ceremony was that even if you come back to your body and you're aware, you have to respect everybody else in the room. And Aggie was like, no, that's, we should be respectful of everybody in the room. And I was like, okay, yeah, I, you know, you're right. And that's when I went through another ego death. And I literally sat there and was like, this isn't all about me. It's not. And I definitely remember being younger and making things a lot of the time all about me. And that's something that I had been very much letting go of as I was getting older. But still, in this moment, I was making it about me. And I wasn't thinking of everybody else. And that's when Mother Aya, I closed my eyes, and she came back to me and she said, you now have to let go of this part of your ego. You have to be respectful of everybody else because everybody else is also going through their process right now. And yes, you have the choice in this life to do anything that you want, but you have to be respectful of everyone else and accepting of everyone else in their process. And so that means if you want to continue your healing, you have to let go of this part of your ego. And I literally felt another layer peel off of me. And that's when Aggie eventually said that she wanted to go back to continue her healing. And I said, okay, I love you and I wish you the best. And she laid back down and I got up. And before going back to my space, I went over to Natalia and Guy and I thanked them because actually when I went over to Aggie at first, Natalia did come up to me and she said, hey, you know, we're not supposed to be talking with anyone right now. And I said to her, I said, hey, I know that I, I know Natalia, but something that really came to me was that I need to have this moment with Aggie right now to help with our healing, because that was something that I had sent my intentions on going into was healing from everything that I was going through, from all the walls that I had built up relation, you know, relationship wise and, and not wanting to fully give myself to somebody else for fear of being hurt again. And, and I told her that you know, this would be really helpful for us. And she leaned over to Aggie and asked Aggie's permission. And Aggie, of course, said yes. And, and so, you know, I wanted to go back to Natalia and Guy to let them know how thankful I was for them allowing us to have that moment because that really made a big difference in our healing. And I then went back to my space. I laid down a little bit more. And at this point, I was feeling like, hey, I kind of want I kind of want the ceremony to end and remember. And then like every time I would lay down and I was like, oh, I, I want this to end. Mother Aya would say to me, if you want it to end, if you want to come back to your body, you can do that. That's your choice. Remember, everything in life is a choice. You have to accept that with everything that you do. You have to accept that, that no matter what, you decide how you want your life to be. And I was kind of floating in and out. And then that's when I sat up. I just started looking around at everybody. And in that moment, I was like, wow, I really see everybody. Oh, it's almost, almost like I could see everybody outside of themselves. I was looking at everybody so much more now than just for their outer appearance, but really for who they were on the inside. And this is always how I've judged people, for lack of a better word, is I've based my judgment on them, on who they were, not just how they looked, but at the same time, I also know how I would get way too caught up in looks, both with other people and myself, and not fully taking somebody for who they are on the inside. But in this moment, I was like, wow, this is, I really see everybody here for who they are. And it was so powerful. And that's when I turned over to the man sitting next to me, Pablo. And he had embraced me before the ceremony. He said, hey, you know, Bobby, it's great to meet you. It's 
thank you for coming here on this on this ceremony on this journey with us he had sat with the medicine multiple times and uh, another guy Alex he was he was across from us he basically did the same thing at the beginning of the ceremony but going in before the ceremony I was very reserved and then I had this moment where I turned over to Pablo and I was like man thank you Pablo I really appreciate you you were so kind and welcoming to me right at the beginning and that that made such a difference for me and I want you to know how much I appreciate you and how thankful I am to be going on this journey with you right now and he said the same thing and we just had a really good heart to heart moment with each other and then he was drumming his drum and he gave me a rattle and I started using the rattle, just kind of shaking, just feeling the beats. Because at, at that point, I felt I had gone through my healing. And I really did. And I went through my healing. And I was like, I want to help in others' healing. And this also really helped me in mine. Because the other thing that I had been struggling with was staying present in the moment. That's something that I started struggling with after my dad passed. Before my dad passed, I was always super present in the moment. I didn't really have a care in the world because I knew that no matter what, I'm gonna get the job done through my hard work and perseverance. But like I said at the beginning, losing my dad, he was my safety net. He was that security. He was, that, he was my father and he was my guide as a man in this world. And not having him, I lost that confidence in myself. And that's when I started becoming more anxious and fearing, fearful of the future and not being as present in the moment. And especially when it came to work, always feeling like I needed to work, 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 work. And I put that over a lot of things and a lot of experiences, which in reality, what matters most is not about the work that you do in this life. It's about what you do for others and how you make others feel. Now, of course, if your work is a part of doing right by others and making others feel good, then by all means, your work you know, matters. But in a sense, and this is not to say like your work and what you're doing doesn't matter, but I want people to, I want you, what I'm, the, what I'm saying is I just want you to remember that how you make somebody feel is what they're going to remember you for when you pass. They're not gonna remember you for the accountant that you were, or the construction worker, or the barista, or whatever it else it is that you did, professional athlete. Yes, people might remember you more if you were a professional athlete because of celebrity fame, but if you were a shitty person, no one's really gonna care about you if you made people feel shitty. And so that was very, healing for me as well because it just reaffirmed to me what my purpose is in this life and that is to help others heal themselves not i can't because the reality is i can't heal humanity humanity i can't save the world all i can do is lead by example and be a guide for those who are ready to save themselves because change comes from within you have to want to change. You have to be ready to change. And that's why even going into an ayahuasca ceremony, you have to be wanting to change. You have to be ready to make changes because Aya, Mother Aya, is really going to help you make those changes and help heal you. And so at in this moment, I just was like, oh, I kind of want the ceremony to end. But then I was like, no, but that's just kind of doing the same thing that I've always been doing is just trying to get to the next moment but what's the rush i'm here i'm now where else would i want to be where else am i going to do i'm going to go sit upstairs no i want to be here i want to be here in this in this moment and i want to really feel this and experience this and so that's when shauna she was one of the other guides of the ceremony she came and she sat down next to me and she had a drum and she put it next to me and that's when i was like hey you know what i'm gonna start drumming and i picked up the drum and i just kind of just started drumming and Something that I felt really connected to in that moment was my dad, because my dad really loved to drum when he was alive. Uh, not so much when I was alive. I mean, he kind of, kind of would always be sitting there just like doing beats every now and then. But when he was younger, he used to actually drum a lot. And I had never really drummed before in my life, but I just was really feeling the beat. Everything just like really flowed for me and I felt connected to him in that moment and it was really nice and it was just really nice because my whole intentions with the drumming was to help 
others in the room continue their healing because everything is vibrations we're all vibrating on different frequency levels and that's why it's super important to be mindful of the vibrations around you specifically music and media if you're watching a lot of negative media and listening to a lot of low vibrational music then that's going to bring your aura down and that's going to bring your mind down and that's going to limit you and it's going to give you a lot of limiting beliefs around the world and you're going to start work looking at the world a lot more negatively but if you switched what you're consuming and that also includes the people that are around you as well because people can be operating at low vibrational frequencies and that doesn't mean you know they're bad people obviously yes some people are bad people but that's because they choose that and if you're surrounding yourself with those type of people then they're ultimately going to bring you down as well and so that's how i was thinking about it in this moment i just wanted to help in others healing and i'm just gonna let my good vibes right now flow to the rest of the room and that's pretty much what i did for the rest of the ceremony was i drummed and and i felt really relieving it felt really freeing and i Again, I, I highly recommend, highly, highly recommend that if you are suffering internally, please do not suffer in silence. Reach out to somebody. You can always hear. I, I know we have some really great loyal subscribers here at Planet Strength. You guys always, please feel free to reach out. I am here to help. I would love to listen to everything that you have to say. If you are ready and willing to open up, I am here, you have an open door. Feel free to comment below because this was the most powerful and transformative experience of my life. And I cannot speak highly enough of the medicine. I'm really looking forward to sitting with Mother I again at some point and to deepening the connection with myself, with my spirituality and with the spiritual beings around me, including all of you. And I really hope that you guys have an experience and you get to sit with Mother Aya someday because she will give you everything that you need and more. So thank you, Natalia and Guy, for helping orchestrate this. You guys really made the biggest difference for me in my life. And I'm so thankful for you because if it wasn't this for this experience, I wouldn't be of the mindset of the of of I just wouldn't be where I'm at right now, feeling as vibrant and as happy as I am, even given everything that I've gone through in my life. I was in such a low I was just in such a low place and you guys really helped me get out of that. So thank you so much, really. And thank you guys for watching. I hope this helped you. If you are thinking about having an ayahuasca experience, again, I highly recommend it. It's something that I think everybody should do, but you have to be ready and willing to change. If you're not ready and willing to change with whatever it is in life, you're not going to be able to see that change. So you will know mother aya she will call you maybe she's calling you now and if she is then it means now's your time so again thank you so much for taking your time to watch this video i hope that it helped and much love one love to all of you thank you